Rahim. Assalamualaikum. Yes, hello everyone. And uh, t uh, this is uh, lecture number 31, in which I'm going to talk also about the summary, as I did for the uh, for the book uh, for Kogenhauer, uh, for uh, uh, Stephen and Kogenhauer, and uh, and and here we are going to talk about also one good book here, which is by Thomas Marlin, and uh, well, I would say that. Uh, it, it has some. It, it has a different approach, uh, approach of how uh, how applicable it is to the real life. So, if if you have a look at this reference, we use this as a reference. Uh, it will be good. You're going to gain from it. So, just a quick go. I'm going to cover some topics here, and I'm just using <coughs> I'm just using the book to cover some topics. So what do we have here? So this is the book, Process Control, Designing Processes and Control System for Dynamic Performance for Thomas Mar Marlin. Okay, so uh, where, uh, how, how can we gain from this book? So I'm going to show you that there are many good chapters. So I, 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 I'm just starting with, with something that we have already done. And, and this is a very nice summary that I can see here. And this summary tells you about what we have done right uh, if you look at it uh, so th this is like a, a CSTR and as you said as I said there's CSTR which like it's only CST you have only uh, temperature uh, sorry uh, with no reaction so you're not expecting temperature to be changing or no concentration or concentration could be changing because of a mixing process but there's like no reaction in this case we have CA0 and CA we have reaction A produces B because we want to find CA, we need to find component. We, we need the component mass balance, okay? The component material balance. The input is CA0, the output is CA, and then I can find a relationship between CA to CA0 or CAI, as we have stated. Uh, and if you find the transfer function, you're going to find the transfer function is KP over tau S plus one. And sometimes it's called K or KP. The reason they put KP is just to say that this is the gain of that P, of the process. Because in future you're going to learn uh, the KC, which is the gain of the C, which is the controller. Okay, and, and going to the temperature here, uh, if you look at the temperature, the te te uh, if you want to know how the temperature is changing in time, definitely you need the energy balance, and which means that you have an input of T naught, and then you want to have the output which has T, and then you have a relationship of T over T naught. My my KP is going to go, going to be one if I'm talking about a measuring sensor. Otherwise, it's not going to be one. And if, then we have the tau is equal to V uh, over F. Okay, V over F. And here uh, we could have a T coil. So, so the input now in this system is just T naught. But if you have T coil, we have also T C, or the jacket. So we have T J. In this case, I want to see how the height is changing here. It's representing height as level L. So if I want to look at how the height is changing, I will use the overall material balance as we have, as we have said. And you're going to find my K, uh, gain, uh, the sensitivity gain uh, is, is this form and my, my time constant to be this form. Of course, the gain tells me that the, the sensitivity depends on what? It depends on the, the K value, okay? You see the K value here, and it also depends on the level, okay? So it depends on the valve and the level. Here it depends on the valve. K, K is the alpha, right? The alpha, so he, he, he just presented it as K. So it, it depends on the alpha, the, the, the valve, okay, the, the, the characteristics of the liquid, the specific gravity, for example, and it depends also on the area. So the, so the, the time depends on the area. However, if you talk about the gain, <coughs> it doesn't depend on the area. And of course, the current force is something that we have not taken, but, but this is beautiful how we can look at things uh, in a moment and we know that we, we know all this okay uh, so what else do we have uh, if you can recall that if an imp for an impulse response you're going to get this uh, function here for second order this is the way how it appears in the time domain and this is a transfer function standard form of a second order transfer function so in the time domain it looks like that and the S domain it looks like that as either you take Laplace 
uh, sorry, Laplace inverse of this one, or take Laplace of the above equation, you're going to find the either one. So if you take Laplace of this time domain, you'll get this transfer function. If you take Laplace inverse of this transfer function, you'll get this equation here. Uh, and if you, of course, work on the standard form, you're going to find the values of xi, and, uh, and the xi will tell you if it is oscillating or not, or underdamped, uh, or, or uh, overdamped. And again here, uh, if we look at our system, which is a second order in which we are looking at CB, so CB is a function of CA, and CA is a function of CA0. So we have like two transfer function multiplication, and we are going to get a second order, so CA0 is the input output CB, uh, and this is my K and tau square, which is, the, which is the square root, okay? If you want to find tau, is the square root of tau A and tau B. And of course, we already went through this, right? And, and you're going to have two xi tau, which is equal to tau A plus tau B. Okay, uh, what else do we have? Energy balance, of course, we know T is a function of T0. Uh, and what else did we say? We also said that if we have like two tanks in series, you're going to have a second order process. And of course, I will need my overall material balance to, for both of them uh, so that I can get my dh by dt. And we are going to multiply the transfer function of both to get the second order. And this is what you will get. You will get tau plus tau, in this case, two tau, because you're going to have like two tanks with the, the same same two tanks with the same area and so on. Okay, great. <clears throat> uh, so this is what we have. I, I, I just went through it because it's, it's really nice to, to look out, out, for a summary and, and it makes life easier. If I want to look at how my overdamped process looks like, we already know how it looks like. However, if you want to see how does it uh, uh, how is the, what is the equation of the overdamped step response? This is the equation of the overdamped step response. So this is overdamped over one. So size is greater than one. And if I have two equal roots, where uh, where uh, xi is equal to one, and, and, and in this case, two equal roots which are negative, so stable. Uh, so you're going to have this equation. And then if you have xi less than one, that means you have complex roots. And if you have complex roots which are in the poles, which means you're going to have sine and cosine terms, and you can see that it will be oscillatory, right? Oscillatory. And of course, you can also check, as we have shown before, if you do an impulse response, you're going to get uh, these equations for overdamped impulse response and critical damped impulse response and the underdamped impulse response. If I want to know the, how the amplitude will be of my output, this is the amplitude, and we also can find what is the, uh, uh, the, the, the shift, the shift. And here we have the dead time, which is T minus theta as we can represent it. And in the S domain is going to be represented as E to the power minus theta S, E to the power minus theta S. <coughs> uh, we, we don't worry about if we take this to the S to the time domain about how the amplitude will change because it's always a multiplication of one. If you go to the integrator, we said that we will have an integrator if you have what? If you have a pump at the exit, and this is what you're going to get as a pump and the exit. Self-regulation process, that means there's a process which is, which is controlling itself without a controller, which means for a process that's self-regulatory, <coughs> the output variables tend to a steady state after input variables have reached constant value. So it will go to a new steady state value. Okay, so this is called self-regulatory. The, the, the question is that, can I, make, can I design the process to always have this, my system as self-regulatory? That means I need to do a lot in design, designing the process, the pipes, the valves, uh, the, the, the heating, uh, the pressure, uh, uh, the, the pressure control, having more volume. To, so, so we can talk about uh, here, having the, the self-regulation process. And here, uh, just an example, just an example like the temperature dt by dt, which is equal to, to these equations. This is just represented in a different way. It is T minus Tn, if you can remember, plus Q over rho V uh, Cp, if you can remember. So it's F over V into T minus Tn. So just rearranging it, you're going to have something which looks like that. 
And here what it is telling us, it's telling us that the external inputs, like what is changing my T, TCN, so what is entering my system is changing the temperature of my system, or the T naught, right? Oh, T naught is here, sorry, it's T naught here, it is affecting my temperature of the system, or the TCN the, the, from the coil, it is heating up or cooling up the system. So these are the external inputs that would affect my temperature. So how this will self-regulate itself through the inherited negative feedback, okay, from the feedback. Uh, wh what is the feedback? I already have this uh, uh, feedback of, of U, uh, which is the, the, the heat transfer coefficient. And also have feedback from the CP and all that is multiplied by T. And also have feedback from the F over V. I know what's going on. So this feedback would help it to return to a certain position. Some processes have inherent positive and negative feedback. So as this example, if I have a reaction, I will have inherent negative feedback and I will have inherent positive feedback. And this will help my system to self-regulate itself, to self-regulate itself. Okay, great. And we also talked about non-interacting systems. Non-interacting system that if you have two tanks, uh, each tank will affect the other tank. And in this example, this is a very good example of uh, interacting non-interacting like the second tank is not uh, this tank is affected by the first but the first is not affected by the second and definitely the second is not affected by the third in this case it's like I have two tanks this is affected by this tank and that tank is affected by this tank so here this head pressure will push to the right and to the left at the same time right so what this is what we are trying to talk about the interacting and if it is interacting I, I cannot multiply if I find the relationship of F2 over F1 and then F1 over F0 I just cannot say that I will multiply them it doesn't work like that okay so this uh, th this multiplication of transfer function of y3 over y2 multiplied by y2 over y1 multiplied by y1 over xs I'm going to find the relationship of y3 over xs this is applicable to this system here, but it is not applicable to that system there. Okay, so here what you are trying to say that the model for general non-interacting systems, so this is the non-interacting systems, right? And for n first order in series, it gives us these values of, of either tau or the overall gain uh, that I have. However, for interacting systems, uh, it's not easy and, and uh, it, it needs some kind of to know what kind of interacting it is and and as we said before like if if I have one tank and we will solve the problem already in this case the, if I have one tank this is how it looks like if I have two tanks it's going to be more like an S shape if you can see it went little to the right and then it went like that if I have five tanks it will go little to the right it's like a time delay now if i want to approximate it's like time delay and a first order or a time delay and over damp process right so here five tanks is more like an s shape and it goes like that and of course 10 tanks it goes like that and 20 tanks it goes like that okay and so wh what we can suggest here is that if for first or second order, I can fit first and second order to any of these systems. As more complicated still it can go, I still can predict. So I don't need to study three tanks, four, five, six, ten, twenty tanks, uh, how does its response, and then it come up with equations. Enough for me to study for n is equal to one and two for, for, for two, uh, se first and second order, and that will be good enough for us. And then we're going to approximate the higher orders to the smaller orders. Okay, of course for interacting, is the, the, the story is different and, and you can see that it does not obey the way how, how, how we are expecting. So it's going to be very different. It's going to be very different. Okay, so that's all that I had to explain here. And let's go to something else as well. In, in another chapter, which is chapter number four. I, actually, I like this chapter. I should have explained that chapter before that one. So what do I have? If, if you recall, if you recall uh, that what should we do to develop any model, okay? The first thing you need to do to formulate based on conservation balances, that means mass and energy balance equations. And after you do the mass energy balance, you're going to linearize, okay? There's another way to, to use numerical solutions. 
So you have the mod, you have the, uh, you have the model equations which are derivative equations, and these derivative equations you can use Rank-Kutta method, for example, which is a numerical solution. You already use that in numerical analysis. So you can use a simulation numeric solution, or you can linearize the nonlinear terms, okay, to solve analytically, and we can study its stability as well. So we are going to linearize and then express them in deviation variables. And, and, and of course, we take the Laplace transform. And when you do the Laplace transform, we find it. Now we can study the system. We have our transfer function. We can know the initial condition. We can draw the block diagram of the whole system. We can have the overall transfer function. And we can find the final value through one and final value theorem. We can know the stability and even studying the frequency response in which you're going to study in process control. And you also can take Laplace transform and, uh, and work on that <coughs> analytically to just to make it easier where we can use partial fraction and, and, and of course, uh, we, we, we study the, 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 the transient of the linearized system. Even though that we know that there is a little difference from what we may get in the linearized system than a nonlinear system. Okay, so what else you can see here? So you can see here, <coughs> You can see here that uh, I have a tank of an input and an output. This is the reaction. R is equal to minus Kc squared. In this case, it's second order in A. And this is the equation that if you can remember, dCa by dt is equal to F over V into Ca naught minus Ca plus the rate of reaction. And in this case, rate of reaction is minus Kca squared. Uh, we, I said F over V, so this V would cancel out if I divide F over V and V over V. <coughs> So it's exactly like the equation that we have obtained. If you want to linearize it, this KCA square becomes 2KCA, if you can see here. And of course, we already studied to do this in two, time, in two different types. It's either using like obtaining the Jacobian uh, matrix or the partial differential equations, uh, the, the one that we use, or you take that as steady state, subtract them from each other, and then you get the linearized form, and then you take the Laplace transform, of course, if you, you get the Laplace transform uh, to get the tau and the k value, the tau and the k value. <clears throat> and of course, we can play analytically by saying that if I have a step input, what is my output? It is km, okay, this is m, which is the, the change in the input, right? Delta C and all. km to 1 minus e to the power minus t over tau. So uh, it is beautiful to show how, how things are... <coughs> are prepared for us here. This is just using one of the Euler method or the rank kutta method, or, okay, which is like uh, the 2, 3, or the 2, 3 in MATLAB. Uh, so this is like how it is coded. Okay, when we obtain our transfer function, we can use the final value theorem to find out our final value. We can study stability by looking at the poles. If it is negative, we will say stable. And we also can study the frequency response in which we did not study that because that would be covered in process control, okay? Uh, and it will be help us in, in studying the stability of the process. Uh, so uh, this is what we have uh, to take in, in, in this book. Uh, there is a lot to cover. Uh, it, it is a beautiful book. I would, I would like to advise you to, uh, to go through it. Uh, the, the problems that are at the end of the chapter, uh, it is also valuable. It all depends on your time. If you have more to go to solve problems, you already have your textbook. <clears throat> but I, I was uh, encouraged to open your mind with different approaches, with different approaches of different professors uh, from, the, from the textbooks. Uh, it is different. Guggenhauer had a different approach and and Marlon has a different approach, and Bickett has a different uh, approach, and Seaborg has a different approach with Edgar, and, 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 and Roma Ginoli has a different approach as well. Uh, each one, each guy has, even Stephanopoulos, the, the main book that I studied from uh, when we were young, uh, is also one of the greatest books. Leibn, by the way, Leibn is a very good book as well. It takes more examples. Uh, uh, other than the examples of tanks, it, it, it has more examples in modeling. Uh, we studied also from that book when we were young. So all these are books that I'm trying to mention that you please can go back and, and refer to. 
uh, by this uh, I'm ending my session and I hope that you're gaining from what we have went through thank you very much